What would the inhabitants of the world do if Elijah was to come to them today? It was prophesied that he would be sent to the world before the great and terrible day of our Creator's wrath. Would they hearken to what he said? Would they return to the Torah of Moses with the statutes and judgments in order to be delivered when he told them that this is what they must do? Would they offer up to our Elohim the offering of righteousness that this prophet was prophesied to announce to them? Would they cover their head like he was, was to tell them that they must do? Would they put their shoes on their feet like this end time servant was prophesied to tell them to do in order to ready themselves for the second exodus that he was, sent, was to be sent to announce? Would they prepare the way for Yeshua's return by making their path straight, by returning to the only straight path, which is living our Creator's word? Would they stop eating the bread of men like this man would tell them to do and start feeding their minds with the unleavened bread of life when he said to? Would they not cover their lips and cry aloud with him and spare not to warn the, the people with him that the day and the year of Yahweh's vengeance has been declared? Would they not weep and mourn for the coming destruction of all who will not repent and weep only for themselves that they have transgressed against our Elohim? like his prophet would tell them to do? Would they turn their heads, their, excuse me, would they turn their hearts to desire the hearts of the patriarchs of old like Abraham and Moses and seek to obey their creator in order to learn his righteousness like these men did? I ask these questions because these things are the work that the scripture record that this end time servant will be sent with. The answer is no, they would not. Only a very, very, very few would hearken to what this servant would speak. How do I know this? Because I have been plucked out of the fire and raised up out of the captivity to become this man and have been crying out these instructions for many months now on one of the most, one of the most explosive media outlets available to man, if not the most explosive media outlet available. And almost none have hearkened to what I have cried out. And I have not come in my own name, name making this cry. Our Creator sent me with an irrefutable resume that his prophets recorded thousands of years ago that proves that I am the one who would be sent in the spirit of Elijah. And this resume was not allowed to be duplicated, nor was a counterfeit of it allowed to be brought forward. Satan was not allowed to, to stage a, 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 a person with this work like he was under the, uh, certainly able to stage so many other impostors, but they haven't come with this work. Measure all those who have claimed to be the Elijah to come, and none of them have brought forth this work. And actually, there's the verses I've talked about in the Ezekiel 24 sign that Yahweh Elohim says that his word is at stake being done this because he promised that when this sign was sent, that I refer to as Ezekiel 24 sign, that we can know that it's, that it's him, it's from him. But his word has not been good enough proof for most of you. You want fireworks, and now you're about ready to get them. The question that you should be asking yourselves is why would you not do the things that are recorded that Elijah would come to you with, with without him needing to be sent to you to tell you these things anyway? They are commandments from our Creator. These things were to be a way of life anyway. We should have always been warning others that his wrath was one day coming to those who would not obey him. And we should have always been obeying him ourselves. We should have always been keeping his, his Torah. We are commanded to never depart from his Torah with his statutes and judgments. So why wouldn't you return to them now that you're being told to? He sent his son to bear witness to the writings of the prophets. The writings of the prophets testify to what I've spoken. Why wasn't his son a good enough witness for you? He told us that we must follow him and he obeyed his father's every word. This means that we have to obey his father's every word if we're to follow him. Otherwise, we're following a different Messiah, a make-believe Messiah. Why didn't you follow him and seek to become as he is? He became as his father is. He became one with him, and we are to become one with him. He said this in many different ways. He showed us the way, and he showed us the truth, and he showed us the life. He became his father's word and lived it to a T, and he told us that his father's word is the truth that saves us, the truth that sets us free. Why did you choose to follow a man who led you to a different path instead? I'm referring to the abomination that desolated the truth, Saul of Tarsus. If you'd hearkened to the Torah of Moses, you would have stoned Saul instead of following him. Of course, he's already dead, but you do not stone those who teach his doctrines. This is the same thing. 
And now Elijah has been sent to restore all things like even Yeshua prophesied would happen, but you will not hearken to him. No, you still want to follow the wolves in sheep's clothing instead because your uncircumcised hearts are stiff-necked and rebellious. If you are still waiting for Elijah to come and you think that I am not this man, then what word do you think that he will come bearing? Do you think that he will come in agreement with your boy Saul of the Tares? Will he come with the message, just give your heart to some make-believe Messiah that you call Jesus and confess his name with your mouth and say that he has been resurrected from the dead and you can then go off to heaven and spend eternity floating around on clouds or something like this? Basically the message that Saul came with? No, this is a be a make-believe Elijah that you're waiting for. The prophet Malachi recorded that Elijah would be would come before the great and terrible day of Yahweh's wrath would come like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he will set as a refiner and a purifier of silver, he says, and he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them like gold and silver so that they will offer to Yahweh an offering in righteousness. But sadly, just like you have made make-believe images of our Elohim and make-believe images of his son to follow after, you have also made up make-believe images of the work that the one who would be sent in the spirit of Elijah would come with. Your rejection to what I have spoken testifies that my father's word has no place in your pride-filled, rebellious hearts. His word testifies to the work that he has sent, the one who would be sent in the spirit of Elijah to restore. His word testifies to what I have spoken, and your rejection of his word proves why he is sending his wrath upon you. The day of his wrath will soon be upon you if you do not turn from your rebellion to his word and hearken to him. The acceptable day of and a year of, of his vengeance has been proclaimed. Hearken to him and cleave unto his righteousness, and he will deliver you. If you do not, he will purge you from before his face. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim.